that I made today, what, Je what the Lord gave me today was the inner healing that is caused by the Holy Spirit. The inner healing caused by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The advice and the mandate of our of our ministry is Exodus uh, 5 verse 1, which says, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifices of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Ezekiel chapter 3, 18 and 19 says, When I say unto the wicked, unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And we have five things when we go in the house of the Lord. The five things that you carry, must carry when going to the house of the Lord is the Bible, the notebook, the pen, the hymn book, and your offering. May God bless you all. Amen. My topic, I will stand with the scripture of Mark chapter 15, verse 21. Mark 15, verse 21. If you are there, you, anyone can read for me if you are there. Mark 15, 21. Amen. God bless you. Okay. Mark 15, 21, I read. And they compelled one Simon, a Syrian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That is my scripture that I'm going to stand, so to stand on today. We, we as Christians or children of God, we have days and times and periods that we have difficult moments. There are people who you reach a place where you feel that you are alone. You reach a place where nobody understands you. You can reach a place where no one wants to hear you. You reach a place where no one understands you. Even the people you depend on, they run all from you. You find you alone. Sometimes you think even the heaven has closed on you because you're praying and you're not seeing anything. You think that maybe God is not even hearing you. Those are the places sometimes you reach and you lose hope. Because you think, yes, God is not listening to me. You have gone anywhere, no help, no one to turn to. And that's why I'm using this scripture by saying, heaven cannot close on you. You might think it's closed on you, but heaven is still there, open for you. When Jesus was was taken to Pilate to be crucified, to be, to be accused. He was accused. That time, he was taken to the high priest. He had no one to turn to. The disciples denied him. Everybody who, he made miracles, people ate bread, but that hour, they didn't remember to be with him. They left him alone. He was totally alone. No one to turn to. Noah, even that moment, he saw like God the Father has left him. He was all alone. He was all alone. But on the way, as he was beaten up, on the way to Golgotha, with that heavy cross, with all the bleeding, he was bleeding. He bleed a lot. He lost, he lost strength. He could not even stand up. He fell down. He could not even lift that cross again. Still, he was being beaten. He was being abused. He was being pushed 
to stand, he stand, he pushed, he fell down with a cross on him. He, could, he reached a place where he had no strength anymore. But God raised Simon, the Cyrenian, to carry that cross for him. Simon carried that cross, encouraging him, and he said, it's not far. It's, we are almost there. The devil wanted to stop Jesus from reaching Golgotha. But Simon encouraged him and said, we are almost there. This cross has to reach Golgotha. This cross has to reach there because there is where the covenant was made, was going to be done, was going to be made, the covenant between God and humanity. Though he didn't have strength, but Simon encouraged him, say, let's go, let's go. We are almost there. So in your life, you can think you are alone. But God has raised a Simon somewhere who is praying for you, who is encouraging you. You might not know somebody is praying for you, but there's Simon somewhere praying for you. I saw a, a clip on WhatsApp. There's a woman who boarded an air, a, a plane. He was, she was traveling. When she reached in that plane, all of a sudden, she was just filled by the Holy Spirit and she started shouting about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They tried to control her. She, couldn't, she was uncontrollable. She was shouting, Jesus, Jesus. Did those people know her? No, she was not known. But she stood up to stand for that plane. When they tried to put her out of that plane because she was uncontrollable, they had to put her out. But before the plane took off, they found out that it had a mechanical, technical problem. The, the plane had a technical problem. That's the Holy Spirit who raised this woman to save how many thousands in that plane? This, the plane didn't take off. Nobody knew her. But she had an alarm to say this plane has a problem. The Holy Spirit was speaking to her. She was just jumping from one place to another. People are wondering, who is this? Why is she shouting? But Jesus had raised her to save those people. Otherwise, how many people would have died? That plane never took off that day. It delayed because God can raise a Simon somewhere to save you to pray for you. We walk, you can see, we have people, you might think you don't know their language, you don't know their race. You walk with people like, uh, in my country, we have travelers, when you're traveling in the, in the bus, you reach a place, you see preachers coming in and preaching in the bus. They just preach, they go somewhere, they come out, another one gets in. We don't know them, but there is a reason that God put these people to enter these buses to protect accidents. But we don't know them. You don't have to know who is praying for you. But God has raised someone to pray for you. So you should not give up in whatever problems you are going through. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we have a um, place where pastors accuse you. The pastors you want to run to for help is the one condemning you. The beloved friends, the brethren that you want to tell your problems, are the ones who say, ah, she's always like that. She's always with the same story. You, they run away from you. They run away from me instead of helping you, instead of supporting you, they run away from you. But remember, my sister, even if a pastor has spoiled, heaven hasn't spoiled, has, heaven hasn't closed, heaven cannot throw you out, heaven cannot let you suffer. He's there to raise a simon. So the time of depending on prophets and preachers, because you want to hear prophecy, you want to hear what you want to hear, is done. Go to God by yourself. Seek him. Seek him. We have a high, a high priest. We have our prophet 
who is Jesus Christ. You don't need to be told anything. You don't need to go to somewhere because, okay, whenever I want to get married, I cannot get married because I don't know something. Let me go to this pastor. Let me go to this prophet so that this can tell me what's happening with my life. Jesus is there. Jesus is there. Let's stop following the following people who who we think they are going to tell us anything. It's nobody will tell you the truth. Nobody will tell you the truth. Nobody will help you in your life. It's just you who will go on your knees and ask God to help you. So there is a Simon somewhere kneeling down for you. There is a Simon somewhere kneeling down for you. So we have been created up, we have been brought up in a doctrine where we have only laws. You know, the walls have, we are staying on, between the walls. So when you want to pray, what you see in front is the wall. So you go to, to a pastor, pastor say, go and pray. Whatever you, you don't get breakthrough. You can't get breakthrough. Whatever you pray, your problems are increasing day and day. So you wonder why. And it's, it's your pastor who is telling you, go, just go and pray. I pass through this all. Go and pray. God will help you. God will help you. Huh? When I, when I, I divorced my, my, my husband because of the wrong marriage, a, a pastor just came to me and said, how are you doing with your, with your new life? You know, that proudly. How are you, what are you doing with the new life? I just looked at him and I said, I'm fine. I'm okay. You know, for him, he was mocking me. He was mocking me. He wasn't telling me in the right way. Because I saw the way he came to me and I saw the way he talked. So he was just mocking me now. How are you doing with that and that? You know, because those are the people who chased me out of the church because of that issue. So I knew he's not talking in a nice way. So I'm going to say good So make sure you don't go to people who are going to discourage you. But God has raised a Simon somewhere. So let's stop following the church laws, eh? which, which of which they don't take us anywhere, you know? The Bible tells us in Hebrew, chapter 14, verse 16, Hebrews, no, Hebrew 4, 16, sorry. Hebrew 4, 16. Let's go there. Anybody who has can read. Four sixteen, I read. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. We have to stop to go, going to people to pray for us. Go to that for the prophecy. The Bible says, "Let's go boldly to the throne of grace." God has given us the opportunity to go straight to Him. Go boldly to the throne. We should come out. Let's come out from the camp. Let's come out from the walls. Jesus, when Jesus walked in, in this world, he walked in Jerusalem. The people who sat in the camp, in the walls, in the temple, they're the ones who are accusing him. They were, they, what they saw on Jesus was the miracle worker, he's, he's claiming himself that he can heal. He's claiming himself that he's God. They saw that Jesus who was bleeding, beaten up, but they didn't see the power which was coming at the end. They didn't see it. The people who were outside are the ones who saw the miracle. They are the ones who met Jesus. They didn't meet Jesus in the temple. In the temple, was, they were questioning. The people who sat in the temple, they were questioning. But the people who knew, who knew the words that Jesus declared on Golgotha were the people outside, were the people who followed him at the cross. When he declared, it's finished. The people in the temple, they didn't see that. They didn't hear that. But outside the temple, they're the ones who heard Jesus say, it's finished. Those are the people who knew who Jesus was. Those are the people who knew Jesus was. Many people are still sitting in the closed walls. As he said, come boldly to the throne of grace. You can see Jesus is in, you cannot meet Jesus in the camp. Jesus, you meet him outside the camp. I mean, come out of that box. 
Seek Jesus. Seek him personally. Seek him out. Those who sit in the church, you get those, those programs. They have programs, you know. You have programs today, we are, we are going to sing like that. We are going to pray like that. After two songs of worship, after one song of praise, then we have prayer, then we have offering. Those are the programs. But the children of God, we are led by the Holy Spirit. We are not led by the programs. Those in the temple, they, they, did, they, they only saw the beaten Jesus, the broken Jesus, the bleeding Jesus, but they didn't see the victory of the end. But the, 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 Roman, the Roman soldier who stood at the cross, when he saw the world shaking, when he saw that the sun was darkened, he gave a salute and he said, for sure, that, was, that is the son of God. When he saw the ground shaking, he said, for sure, he is the son of God. But those in the temple, they were still waiting if that, if that body will be stolen in the temple. They were still waiting. They didn't know that it was already declared that it's finished. They didn't hear that. So they were still thinking, okay, let's see. They only saw that Jesus they were laughing at, that Jesus they were abused. They didn't see that he has already given victory because the covenant was already made. Though Satan wanted to finish him before that. So we have to be strong and know that the devil, the devil will want to stop you to continue in this race. But God is there, God is our intercessor, and go to God and kneel down and just ask for help, direct to him. He's going to hold your hand. There is someone he has raised to come and hold your hand, somebody you may not know. So we have come here to meet everybody. We come from different countries, we come from different languages, but we have come here to encourage each other. It's now here on CMHI, we know each other. Well, we didn't know each other before. This has made us a family. Now we are like one family. We hear about each other. We share our problems with each other in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What does it mean by being outside the camp? Being outside the camp is this, this laws. The Jews lived in the laws. Those laws are the ones which, these laws that made them miss they missed the, the coming of Christ. They missed it because of their laws. They even denied it. They denied Jesus himself. The Bible tells us that even in the beginning, there were laws. But if you want, if you want to see Jesus, come out of these laws. Come out of them and meet him. Even when Jesus came, he walked in those laws, but when he healed the blind man on the Sabbath, they accused him, the people of the law, because he, he, he healed a man on a Sabbath day. You see? And he said, he told them, whether they like it or not, he's the lawmaker. But they told him he has broken the law. He said, it's me who made that law. I'm the, law, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. So he's the lawmaker, but they denied him, thinking the laws came from Moses, while he is the one who made those laws. And they accused him for that. They killed him for that because he broke the law. So if you want to meet, to meet Jesus, just break that law. Come out. Come out of the camp. All the churches this, that have protocols, I pass all the churches that had protocols. We went in a place when I was just a new Christian. We a new baby Christian and uh, we were moving with a, our own group, just small group in house to house from our own to pray for each other. So when we prayed for, we went to one of our sisters and she had typed all the program on a paper. She had said, okay, we start with, with a coffee and then this, this one will pray a, 
a, a prayer and this one will do that, this one will preach this time and all the times and that. So when we came in, she gave us all the programs and uh, my sister just looked and we looked and we said, okay, let's put this program aside and see what the Holy Spirit will do. All of us, we are, new, we are just baby Christians. And even some of us, we were not born again. There's only one person who was born again in this group. That's my sister. But the rest, we were not born again. We we're just following the, the wind. So reaching there, we say, okay, let's see the Holy Spirit, what he'll do. So we started worshiping, we started worshiping, we started praying, we started doing, and we started, we got in the spirit. We got in the spirit, but we were not born again. You can't believe that. So at the end, that program was thrown away. Nothing, what happened didn't go with that program. That coffee, which was the first, became the last at nine o'clock in the night. And we were there around 2, 2.30. So God had his own program. Jesus has his own laws, and his own law is holiness. His law is holiness. So if you want to follow Jesus, break your laws. Come out of it. Come, do, come out, break. You find God's law. You find God, God's law is holiness and righteousness. That's the law of Jesus. God healed, Jesus healed a blind man. That is John chapter 9 from verse 1. John chapter 9 verse 1. If you are there, can you read please? Anyone? My sisters, God bless you. John 9, I read. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be, manif should be made manifest in him. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And Jesus and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation saint. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind said is not this he that was is not he that sat and begged some said this is he others said he is like him but he said i am he therefore said they unto him how were thine eyes opened he answered and said a man that is called jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me go to the pool of Sodom and wash and i went and washed and i received sight then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, he can, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him. Let's stop there for a while. So you see, the people in the camp, the people in the, on, inside the wall, their work is just to ask. This man was healed outside, outside those walls, outside the temple, not inside the temple. So when they asked him, who healed you? <laughs> he explained, he said, a man. He didn't know that man. He said, a man came and told me to, he, he, he put, he put uh, sand in my, uh, mud in my, in my eyes and, I went, and he told me to go and wash in the, in the pool. And he did. And he said, and then they asked him, they, they, they call, how, what do you call that man? He said, 
the prophet. You see? And they had to ask that question again. And he said, I'm telling you he's a prophet and you don't understand. You are the people of God. If you don't know, who else can know? You're the ones to know. Who is he? Eh? Who he is? But the, the man said, what I know. I don't know whether he's a sinner. I don't know whether he's a lawbreaker. I don't know who, whatever is What I know, I was blind, but now I see. But he finished by saying, he's a prophet. Because he said, I was blind, but you, you who know the law, you didn't heal me. I didn't heal here with your laws. You understand? So when this man came out, when Jesus, the, uh, when Jesus now, I will read from uh, verse 18, but Jews but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then do it he now see? And his parents answered them and said, we know not, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means he now said, we know not, or who had opened his eyes. We know not, he is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words spoke the parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they, called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he's a sinner, he be a sinner or not. I know one thing, I know that. Where as I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, what did he do to thee? How opened he thy eyes? He said, um, I have told you and you don't, you do not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? Then they, they revealed him and said, thou art his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. So they had to throw him out of the camp. When he came out of the camp, he met Jesus. And he met Jesus and he said, Lord, tell me this man that I, I want to know him, I want to follow him. Who is he? And Jesus said, it's me. He said, I want to follow you. He didn't want anymore to go back to that wall. He didn't want to go back inside that temple. He said, if it's you, I want to follow you. So we, you see like some people, we, they just follow prophets, they just follow preachers because they give prophecy, uh, because they, I, I don't know, but they just do because they are following. It's as if they don't read the Bible. They don't read the word. People just follow, you see? Because you see that people forget that the law of God, the law of Jesus, if, you, if the law of Jesus is only righteousness and holiness, that's the law of Jesus. In the ground of holiness, it's happiness. There's no stress. People think we are stressed up because we are not making, putting makeups or we are not having hair. So we have stress, we look old, we look like, no. In fact, those people who are putting those makeups, they have more stress because every day they want to know which style do I have. They want to spend, I spend a lot of money on this thing, just thinking, oh, what is the latest fashion today? Don't you think it's stress? It's a lot of stress. I'm throwing money for nothing. Then you, you, you put makeup, you go on the mirror, you go to watch yourself in the mirror. How many times are you going to repeat that? You, you want to see if the lips are nice. You go, you want to see if the, it's stress. I came to realize it was stress. But now you have saved our money. We are not wasting our money in the saloons. We are not wasting our money on clothes, trousers. I don't know what, I don't know high heels. I don't know what we spent. We, it was stressful. It was real stressful. But in Christ Jesus, in the holiness, I'm free. We are just free. You can do what you want. You put your Vaseline on and to go. Who is going to look at you? But before we were thinking, ah, people will not, we are going to a party, you know, I have to look nice. I have, now even, who cares? Who cares? You put your scarf.
laugh on whether they love I put my cup on even if they look at me they say Lucy she's always like that I don't care <laughs> I don't care you know yeah, my, my, my work my, my workmates, they were gossiping about me that Lucy never puts on a, a, a trouser, you know. Lucy, I just heard from the bagger, she only puts on long clothes. She never puts on, I say, wow. So you know that. I'm proud of that. It's stressless, you know, in Jesus' name. You know, so I can only ask a question. Have you heard that pastors commit adultery? Have you heard that pastors smoke? Have you heard that pastors drink? These are the pastors leading other people wrong. My sister told me one time recently that she went in a church. When she was, she was invited in a church. And when she reached there, they were saying, okay, if you want to be, if you want to be blessed, come bring this much money in the envelope. The pastor who was a new pastor, I don't know the way. Bring this money, it's not finished. Okay, if you want to, 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 to give birth because you haven't uh, delivered for a while, you know what, bring this envelope. So in that one survey, there were so many envelopes. If you want to receive Christ, even to receive Christ, bring an envelope. You see, these are the pastors, when you go behind their closet there, you'll find this alcohol, you'll find these things. You can't believe it. And I was asking my sister, is it real? She said, yes. People brought, people are singing and shouting and giving envelope. They are being treated like that because they don't know the word. That, those, that pastor is playing with their minds because the pastor knows they don't know the word. You see? The pastor knows that they don't know the word. Amen. So we have to be keen and know the word. Know what the Lord is speaking to us. Let's not follow people blindly. Amen. Uh, um, I'm going to, uh, Sister Chimonya, read for me Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, I read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the the, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Amen. The theme, this is now the theme of my, my message. The Holy Spirit came to heal the brokenhearted. That was why the Holy Spirit came. Remember, my topic was the inner healing caused by the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to heal the broken. The broken had a doubt, those who mourn. And the comforter, you know, Jesus, when Jesus walked on this earth, he said he had to leave so that he can send the comforter to come and comfort us, to come and console us, to come and protect us, to come and teach us, to counsel us. When Jesus said that, he knew that the people needed it. We needed that. Say, I'll not leave you alone. I will not leave you fatherless. I will send you a helper in the mighty name of Jesus. So the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, most of it was to come to heal the broken, to heal the, 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 the mourners, those who are mourning, because you can see people walking. You can see people dressed very nice. But inside their heart, they are full of tears. Inside their hearts, they are broken. 
But when you see outside, you can't see it. But they are walking broken hearted. So when you see, when Jesus walked here, the most the people who followed Jesus, a third who followed him in his ministry, they were broken hearted people. They were people with problems. You can you can read those people are the ones he healed, they are the ones. He, he healed, they are the ones he raised from dead, the families, those were the broken people who followed Jesus. The congregation had a lot of problems. So when you see a person walking and smiling, something, some people you can think they are smiling but they are crying. People are walking with tears. Hallelujah. Good ones to heal someone here today. The work of the Holy Spirit was to comfort us. There, there are people you see, you can see even in the congregation of happiness where people are rejoicing. You can pick a person who is broken hearted. You can pick by just seeing, you can pick that person out. You know, there's, there's a, a, a very dangerous wound. It's better a, a wound that you can see from outside, but not the wound that is inside. Because the wound of inside, how do you heal the wound, somebody who has a wound inside? How do you heal that? But the wound from outside, even if it doesn't heal, somebody else will give you an advice. You can go and buy this medicine, it will help. Or go to this hospital, they, they, they will, he will direct you even to the doctor who will heal you. But the inside wound is difficult. And that's what the Holy Spirit came to do, to heal us, to bind our wounds. The word say he came to bind our wounds in the mighty name of Jesus. But the person who has a wound, you know, when that wound grows and grows, it starts to rot. And when it starts to rot, it starts to smell. How does the inside wound smell? Complaints, anger, tears every now and then. They don't have enough sleep. You see, this that the, the smell that comes out from somebody who's broken hearted. When you meet, before even you say something, you see somebody crying. You wonder, what is she crying now? What now happened? But the inside, those people who have been, who have, who have lost the family, uh, family members, uh, love, love, the, love, love, the loved ones in the family, they understand the pain when you're broken inside. The pain when nobody can heal you, even if they come, oh, take heart, my sister. Okay, no, that, they, it, that doesn't help anything. Because this person is hurting. This person is hurting. The only medicine for this person is prayer. Pray for that person. It will help. It will help. Sister Chimonia, you can read for me Luke chapter 7, verse 1 to 17. Luke 7, 1 to 17, I read. Now, when he had ended all his saints in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was there, who was there unto him, was sick and ready to die. And when he had of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servants. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, Amen. Amen. You see, Jesus went there to heal. The, that was a soldier, was a, a soldier who had authority, but he had no power. He reduced himself because he was broken. 
His servant would die. But Jesus came and healed the servant. He was happy inside him. He was happy inside him. We have um, also a widow, a widow who had the only son. The widow who had the only son. When Jesus entered the gates, when Jesus entered the, the gates, uh, going on, on his way, he met, he met people carrying the coffin. But inside that, in, in that congregation, he saw a widow who was being held one side and one. You have read that story. Because of time, I'll not uh, go into it so much. So, you know, the Jewish widows, they were known by their dressing. So he noticed there was a widow, the only son. First point, she's a widow. The only son he, he was left it is dead now. He has died. But Jesus, the Bible says he had compassion. He had compassion. When he had compassion, he asked the woman, he told the woman, don't cry. But tears could not, he could, she could not stop crying. That's a hurting, a hurting heart. You, Jesus could only stop the crying by raising the boy up. And God raised that boy up. And when the, Jesus raised the boy up, he gave the son back to the mother. The mother smiled. That's what the Holy Spirit came to do. That's what the Holy Spirit came to do. So the widow, the widow could only smile only. So Jesus met only these people to, to comfort them. Jesus came to, Jesus could not go anywhere without a target. He went everywhere he went with a reason. So no one can understand if you're broken. No one can understand. It's only God who can understand. Amen. Only those who have lost family members can understand in Jesus' name. So when you face these trials, brothers and sisters, we need to console ourselves with prayers, with hymns. They help a lot. Let's pray for our sisters who are brokenhearted. We have people who are suffering through different, different 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 issues we have even pastors who are suffering with different different issues we have to pray for them we have to pray for the men of god who are suffering inside you see them smiling you see them coming to church every day but inside them they're bleeding and don't forget they are carrying our burdens they were carrying our burdens while they have their own that they can't even do anything about it so we have to pray for them we have to stand with them in Jesus' name. Amen. We have to stand with them and pray with them. The servants of God, they have a lot for us. And because of that, we have always to pray and just call them to, just to find out how they are doing. How they are doing. They need that. They need it because when we have problems, we are calling them even in the night. They are 24 seven. They have their jobs 24 seven. Go, home, you call your, your, your servant, servant of God, pray for me. I have this, I have this, I dreamt bad, pray for me. I'm feeling bad, pray for me. Who is praying for him? Who is praying for him? Are we praying for him as he's praying for us? Amen. Widows have suffered. I have a, a group of widows in Kenya. One day they were telling me one time, they were telling me when they go to church, the pastor always, they, when the service is finished, they can't even go to, to greet the pastor because the pastor will just think, ah, they're coming to ask for money. So because of, they push them every now and then they stayed away. They say, now we don't, we just go to church, we come out because when we just want to talk to pastor, even you have something else to talk to the pastor, he just thinks you come for money. And these are widows who depend on them. I felt bad. I felt really pain when I had that. So you say, now who will help them if we push them away? Who will help them? And when they see them now dressing a little bit nice, maybe somebody bought a dress for her, they think now she has money. Now they take also the small thing that she has. They say, bring the money here so that you can be blessed. Bring the money so that your child can do that. Bring that. They are doing that. Bring that money. They are taking again from that widow. 
You can't believe it. The small that she has. So it's not, it's not the right thing. And you know what they say? They say, you know, you have to give the offering that pains you. You know, Abraham gave a painting, a painting offering, a painting tithe. So you have to, what? Why on earth does it say that you have to give a painting? They say give with a joyful heart, not a painting, a, <laughs> a painting heart. How do you give somebody something with a painting heart? Does it have any, any glory in it? Does it have, you know, that's how they're saying. Bring, because Abraham gave the tithe because he loves God. He knew God and he loved him. So somebody cannot tell you, this is a pastor saying, eh? give with a painting heart. I was wondering, at when, uh, when you remove some money, to, you remove the tithe that the heart pains so much, then is the right. Then you get the blessing. They do that because we don't read the Bible. Because we don't read. We don't know. So people just follow it. The, uh, the, measure, the measure is not to see those holding the Bible. Don't see a pastor just holding the Bible and uh, or somebody holding them, you think he knows something else. And the measure is to read that Bible and understand what God is saying in the mighty name of Jesus. Read it and know. Keep it in your heart. Let it search your heart. Let it uproot all evil in you to show you what is good and what is wrong. And if you have the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, you'll know what is right. You'll know the right man of God, a man of God who God has sent and the fake one. We have so many facts. Who, they, pre, they, they, they lie to you. When you go to him, they, they just say a fake. Fake speaking in tongues, you know, that's the, the, the speaking tongues that is faked up. You know, we have so many that are faking. You think it's a man, then you say, he'll just say para, 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 and all of a sudden he tells you a word. And now you think he's a man of God. And then you say, okay, can you give some offering because of the, this prayer? Because we don't know the word. So let's move out. Let's move out of this. Let's move out of the camp. Let's move out and let's concentrate. Let's go to God himself. When Elizabeth and Mary met, they didn't wait for the children to be born to know each other. It's the Holy Spirit in them that made those children leap when they just met, when they shook hands. It's the Holy Spirit that made those reaction in their stomachs to know that, ah, oh, these people, they know each other. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you'll know the right man of God and you're not the fake prophet. You will know if you have the Holy Spirit. You will know. You'll say, I saw that person. My spirit is feeling something different. I don't know, but there's something wrong with this person. You will know. You will know. So let's seek God. Let's seek God. It's he who will heal us. He's he who will bind our wounds. Amen. Amen. So it, we have to pray for each other. We have to pray for each other. And the problem with us ladies is we all, <laughs> some ladies, they just, I had a friend, always looking the latest prophet online. And when she finds the latest prophet, she says, uh-uh, I'm going. She will take a flight, pay flight to the prophet. She go there, she come, but her problem never ends because she is always changing. Today she'll go to that, another month she'll go to that. She's always busy. So why do, do people waste their time? It's because they don't know the word. They don't know the word. We need to read the word. When you're, you need to, to, to seek your personal Jesus, you should not seek a Jesus that from somebody else. Seek your personal Jesus. And when you have you have trials. That means the, the pain. Go on your knees. Go on your knees. Seek God. Seek Jesus for yourself. If we, 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 we I will give the first Samuel chapter 19, verse 18. You see David when Saul wanted to kill him, 
he ran to Prophet Samuel. He ran there for rescue. And when, Sa when, when Saul followed him, and he, when he reached a place, he started to prophesy. You see? He started to prophesy by himself. He was evil by that prophesying because he couldn't reach the man of God with his evil. So go to God. Seek Jesus himself. And then we see Samuel 1, 8, 1 chapter 1, first Samuel chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. Sister Chimonia. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. First Samuel 1, 8 to 10, I read. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten, son, ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. So Anna, she was broken when she was being uh, 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 abused, abused with her uh, the, the sister wife. She was abused every time because she didn't have children. She was broken inside. So what did she go? She went to, to the temple. She went to pour her heart to God. And that's why the priest thought she's drunk. When she drank, she said, I'm pouring my heart to my Lord. She poured her heart there. And God answered her. And God answered her. Let's see, uh, second, second Kings. I'm finishing with that. Second Kings chapter 4. Verse 18 to 28. 2 Kings chapter 4, 18 to 28. I read, And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the, repair, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knee, knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that, they, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled and asked and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Snap not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Camel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehaz his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. 27. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehaz came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me. Then said she, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Amen. I admire that woman. I really admire that woman. This boy, this boy was prophesied uh, by the man of God, Elisha. And she got the child. And after a short time later, when he grew up a little bit, he got sick and he died. The father went with him to reap. To, and when he, he got sick, he was brought back home. But the father remained in the, in the farm. This boy got sick and he died. See the wisdom of that woman. I admire her wisdom. She did, she, what she did, she said, she took this boy and put in the room where she had prepared for the man of God, on that bed, and she closed the door. The, 
She didn't say anything. The if it was me, I was screaming to the farm to call that husband, oh, my, my son. She didn't scream. She didn't say anything. She closed the door and she told the servant, prepare the ass. We are going, and please don't eat, don't stop unless I tell you so. That speed. She didn't tell the servant anything. She went to the, 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 the servant of God. What did she do, the servant? The servant saw some danger somewhere. He said, ah, what is she coming from? She said, are you okay? She said, fine. Is your husband? is fine. Is your child? is fine. But the son is dead. It's fine. And she, she went to the servant of man and she said, why did you lie to me? I didn't ask a son from you. Why did you learn to lie to me? Now you give me a son and now he's dead. Why did you lie to me? He said, I'm not going back if I don't go with you. He said, okay, Geza, ge, take, take that, the, the road, lay it on the He said, I'm not going with that servant. I'm going with you. You are the one who prophesied. It's not him. I don't leave you here. He went. Can you imagine the man, the man of God went back, the son was ready. The husband never knew that the son died. She told her, her husband after the son was raised from dead. Is when now she started telling the story. Look, the woman who has Holy Spirit. If we have the Holy Spirit, we don't go to talk because the people we are telling are the ones who are laughing at us. They are the ones who are gossiping at us. You tell somebody today is going to talk about you tomorrow, Anna, somebody else. You'll hear this story somewhere. Go to God. Anna went to God. David went to Samuel. The Shammite woman went to the prophet. Seek God by yourself. Seek your personal Jesus. We should not look wherever we are, and we should... Pray, because it's only God who can heal our wounds. It's only God who can break those bonds that are hiding inside, that are killing us, that we are moving around with them. You know, they, we are born again, but you feel like everything, like the roof is on you, you know? But Jesus is there. God has raised a Simon somewhere for you. Somebody's praying for you. Somebody is kneeling down for you. So let's encourage ourselves that the Lord Jesus is alive. He's hearing our prayers. The Lord will never leave. You are, you're walking in holiness. God cannot ignore you. You're walking in holiness. How can God ignore his child who is walking in his loads? God cannot ignore you. He'll hear you. He'll answer. God is fighting our battles every day. We hear the testimonies daily. Incredible, isn't that the battle that Jesus is fighting for? He cannot leave us. Those who are not married, we are going to get husbands. Those who haven't, has, have no fruit, fruit of the womb, they are asking for the fruit. God is there. Don't give up. Don't give up. Anna, how many years did she pray? How many years did she cry to God? But she, the Bible tells us she had many after summer, she had many children after Samuel. So God is there for us. And Jesus is going to fight for a battle. Let's seek Jesus, our own personal Jesus. I will leave you with that. May God bless you. Amen. Over to you, Sister Jovita. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you.